Hi there! This is Mrs. Norelli with this week's virtual art lesson. Every time I see you, either here with our virtual lessons or in person, I am going to say to you, Hello, my most amazing artists. How are you today? And you're going to say, Ready to create. Let's give that a try. Hello, my most amazing artists. How are you today? Wait a minute. Something must be wrong. I, I can't hear you. Uh, what's, what's going on? Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, 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 this isn't plugged in. Let's try. Oh, all right. That should do it. Let's try this again. Hello, my most amazing artists. How are you today? Ready to create! I can hear you, that's wonderful! Let's get started! In art class, we are going to have a mantra. A mantra is a fancy word for a slogan that you repeat again and again. We are going to say, I am positive, I am creative, I am mindful, I am amazing, I am an artist. Let's try that together. My mantra, I am positive, I am creative, I am mindful, I am amazing, I am an artist. It's always a great idea to have a little mantra before you get started so your mind is in the right place before you get to work. Another thing that we wanna talk about before we start working is some art rules. Even though you are at home, we are still gonna need some rules. And these are gonna be the same rules that you're gonna see in the classroom when we get together. Let's take a look at them. Our first rule in art is to aim for your best and aim to do right. In art, you always want to aim for your best. And actually, aiming to do right is something we want to do all the time. The next letter is going to be the letter, whoopsie, the letter R. R stands for respect yourself, your friends, and the art room. Right now, you might be working alone and don't really have any friends, but when we get to the classroom, it's always a great idea to respect your friends and those working around you. Right now, you can respect yourself by being kind to yourself as you're working. And the way to respect your art space is to clean up after yourself. When you're done working, make sure you put everything back where it belongs. You might be working at your kitchen table or on a coffee table, or maybe even on a desk. But it's a great idea that when you're finished working on your art projects, to make sure to cap all your markers and put everything back. Maybe you have a little art banner, some little space that you can keep your things, and when you're done working, you put them back. Whoever's at home, your parents or guardians, they will be so happy that you did that. The next rule we wanna look at is the letter these are all upside down. The letter T. That stands for trust in yourself and your ability to learn. When you're making art and you're learning something new, you really need to trust in yourself and your ability to learn. If you play sports or an instrument or really anything that you've learned for the first time, you know it's not easy until you try again and again. So I really want you to trust in yourself. Every time we do an art project, trust in your ability. The great thing about art is there's no right or wrong answer. We all have an artistic license to be as creative as we want, and I want you to use it whenever you can. What I wanna do next is read you a little story. The title of this story is the art teacher is weird. When you look 
look at the word weird, what do you think when you see it? Let's look to the dictionary to see what the definition is of weird. Weird is an adjective that means of strange or extraordinary character, odd or fantastic. I don't know about you, but being weird sounds pretty fantastic. I actually contacted the writer and illustrator of this book. His name is Jeff Schmidt. I asked him if it would be okay for me to read this to you. And he's given me permission, so I'm so excited to share this with you. When you look at a book, before you even open it or start reading, it's a good idea to ask yourself, what do you know? What do you want to know? And what can we learn from this book? So when I look at it, what I know is that weird is fantastic. What I want to know is what is this? And who is this going to be? And let's see what we can learn from this book. This is based on a true story. The art teacher is weird. Have you seen our new art teacher? He's strange to say the least. I haven't met him personally, but the other kids call him a beast. Travis said he has tentacles and Garrett said so too. They both heard it from Sam and Kim, so I guess it must be true. Margaret said his teeth are huge, as sharp as she's ever seen. Angel said he has a yellow tongue, squirming about in between. Carly tried to sneak a peek through the window in the door. She said she thought he might be blue but she couldn't be totally sure. Terry told me he has big horns. They go right out of his head. Jackson said he has a tail striped with golden red. Betty swore he was an alien who came from beyond the stars as proof she shared this photo of him jumping around on Mars. It's possible he's a monster and a very odd one, no lie, to pretend he's one of us. He always rocks a tie. I finally got to meet him on my very first day of art. I have to say, it's a lot of things that set this guy apart. He's got two big horns and a tail and his skin's as blue as the sky. Can he really be our teacher? I just can't believe my eyes. He draws with his teeth and he cuts with his toes. He sculpts with his tail and keeps paint up his nose. He could walk around the room, but he chooses to dance instead. And once he's spent an entire week singing everything he said. If you're paying close attention to his face, each time he speaks, you'll see his eyes get wider and different colors in his cheeks. I used to think Mrs. Diddle was the weirdest teacher in town. And really, she probably was until this guy came around. 
He truly is as strange as all the other kids say, but still he comes to school each and every day. He's not what you'd call normal, but really, who's to say? In art, you get to be yourself, and I think that's okay. This was a really great story, don't you think? What we learned from this story is who the art teacher was and all of his fantastic characteristics. What we also learned, or if you already knew this, it's a great reminder, that it's okay to be yourself. What a great lesson. I love that. It is always okay to be you. And speaking of you, I really want to get to know more about you. And I'm sure you probably want to get to know a little more about me too. Did you all get your art journals from school? Depending on what grade you're in, that will be the color that you will have. If you have it nearby, go ahead and get that out. If for some reason you didn't get one, don't panic, it's okay. For right now you can use a piece of paper, but Ask your parents and guardians if they have one of these for you. Your teacher should have collected one of these from school when they picked up your other items. So depending on your grade, again, you will have a different color. For right now, I'm going to just work on the, uh, I'll work on the orange one and I am going to draw my self portrait in this spot right here. So what I want you to do is I want you to make a self-portrait. A self-portrait is a picture of you. When you make a portrait of someone, that's when you draw a picture of somebody else. But today, we are learning more about you, and I want you to make a self-portrait right on the cover of your art journal. I debated about giving you some direction and maybe showing you how I would draw a self-portrait, but we talked about your creative license. And right now, I want you to be creative and just go with it and try to figure out what that looks like. What will your self-portrait look like on the front of your art journal? You might wanna get a mirror if you have one handy and kind of look at your own characteristics and then try to draw yourself. On the back of this sketchbook, there are so many different areas. What I want you to do on the back is I want you to use these spaces to tell me more things about yourself. For example, you might draw a picture of your family right here, or maybe right here, or even right here, wherever you want. Maybe you have pets and you wanna draw a picture of your pet right here or here, or even here. What about your favorite thing to do in your free time? When you have free time, what do you do? Go ahead and pick another frame to draw your favorite things. What about your favorite thing to eat? What is your favorite thing to have for dinner or snack? Go ahead and pick another area to draw that. Maybe you have a favorite animal. Know what my favorite animal is. Sometimes it changes. Lately, I think llamas are pretty cool and I always love a giraffe. So maybe I'm going to draw one of those. The idea for this art journal and on the back is I want to get to know more about you and I'll be able to do that through your drawings.